Another exciting episode of Storytime Anytime. Do you like to learn about space? If you do, you might consider becoming an astronaut. Maybe you want to be a pilot astronaut. Or maybe you want to do spacewalks and satellite launches and repairs. Becoming an astronaut takes hard work and dedication. Do you want to know what it's like to be a pilot astronaut? From floating in zero-g to reading flight plan information, the job of a pilot astronaut is exciting. Yeah. 
grab some pre-packed food and strap yourself into your bed and enjoy some solitude. Space travel can be tiring as great work still lies ahead. You enjoy the special time alone, snuggled in your bed. The time has come to work, so you put your space suit on. Connected by a cord, you explore this great phenomenon. Your partner works the robot arm to help the sound. mission is successfully complete the shuttle travels back to earth your home without delay and proud to be a citizen of the great us of a you're an astronaut exploring a new place you're an astronaut an astronaut in space you're an astronaut you are studying Jeff rides a spaceship. Jeff waved goodbye to his friends and got into the spaceship. He pushed the on button, then he heard from the ground control. Are you ready for countdown? A-okay, shouted Jeff. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! Jeff squeezed his eyes shut. Baroom! The spaceship made a huge noise. It shot up towards the sky like a big firecracker. Jeff zoomed into space. Then he heard, This is ground control. Let one rocket go now. Jeff pushed the rocket button. The rocket flew away from the spaceship. Soon, Jeff was in orbit. He could see Earth. It looked like a giant blue and white marble. Round and round the Earth Jeff went. He saw a shooting star whiz by. Then he heard, get ready to rocket to the moon. Jeff pushed the on button again. The spaceship went even faster. Soon Jeff saw the moon up ahead. It really did have holes like Swiss cheese. Then Jeff saw a huge rock. It was heading toward the spaceship. He tried to turn this way and that, but he wasn't fast enough. Bang! The rock hit the side of the spaceship. Jeff's spaceship spun around and around. Quickly, he pushed the land button. Screech! The spaceship slowed down and landed on the moon. Jeff pushed the off button and called ground control. I'm on the moon, he yelled. Good, said ground control. Get ready to take your first moonwalk. Jeff was excited. He walked around the spaceship, leaving footprints on the dusty surface. He saw the flag that the first astronauts had placed on the moon. It's good to be here, said Jeff, but there are no houses. No people anywhere. I wouldn't want to live here. There's no one to play with. I know, said Ground Control. Collect some moon rocks, then return to the spaceship. Good idea, said Jeff. Jeff got back into the spaceship and pushed the rocket button again. Soon he was heading back to Earth. Get ready to land, called the Ground Control. Jeff pushed the land button. The spaceship wheels came down. Soon, Jeff was on the ground. 
He opened the door and got out. He took off his spacesuit and said to his friend, It's your turn now. Then Jeff went to see the rest of the space museum and had some space ice cream. Gravity is the force on Earth that keeps things from floating into space. If we drop a dish, it will fall to the ground. If we jump into the air, we will come back down. In space, however, astronauts experience weightlessness. They can turn somersaults in the air and float around the space deck. Did you know that astronauts become one or two inches taller in space? Skylab was designed to see if humans could live in space for a long period of time. It was also a way for us to learn more about the Earth and the Sun. Do you think it's possible for people to live in space someday? Astronauts wanted to learn more about 
Yes, Skylab did let us know that it is possible to live in space for long periods of time. Skylab was launched on May 14, 1973, without any astronauts aboard. The crew was scheduled to blast off and board the Skylab the next day. But because the shield that protects Skylab from the heat of the sun ripped away, another plan was needed. Eleven days later, the Fix-It crew went up and repaired Skylab. It was then used over the next nine months by three separate crews. We learned a lot about the Earth, the Sun, and that it's possible for us to live in space. Then on February 8th of 74, the last Skylab crew quickly climbed aboard and returned to Earth for their job was done. A tiresome trip, but the crew they still Will the earth get too crowded when we need another plan? Is pollution a problem on our precious land? Is outer space the answer? Can we live in colonies and build a home for everyone to live in harmony? Is gravity a problem if new homes we pursue? Those scientists would need to know just how this would be done to live in space. Colonies I think would be great fun. to me so when I grow up I want to be an astronaut I know I'll need to study hard in school be in good health and work well with others I either want to be a pilot astronaut or a mission specialist if I'm a pilot astronaut I will first have to become a jet pilot if I choose to become a mission specialist I will learn to do spacewalks satellite launches and repairs and experiments in space now science is important so Cause when I grow up 
This has been brought to you by Twin Sisters Digital Media and Evergreen Podcasts. Be sure to hit subscribe and tell your friends to join us for our next episode, Protons, Neutrons, and Electrons. Parents, for an opportunity to win a $50 gift card, find us on Facebook by searching Twin Sisters Digital Media. Follow our page, then just like and share our latest post. The winners will be announced on Facebook a week later. If your children enjoyed these songs and stories, go to TwinSisters.com to find even more ways for them to sing and learn. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter for our free Download of the Day giveaways and promotions on exciting new digital learning content like these and much more. And visit our friends at evergreenpodcasts.com. Thank you for joining us at Storytime Anytime.